Hi, today I'm going to share with you my own personal journey going from uh, learning about 3D printing with a resin printer to adding an FDM printer to my workshop and what the learning curve was like for that. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And I first started resin 3D printing at the beginning of the pandemic. And I did that because I lost access to my laser cutter, which was at a maker space. And I could afford to buy a 3D printer and do that from home. So that's why I got into it originally. And at that time, I looked at the different types of 3D printers and I picked resin because it gave me the smoothest finish and was best for art oriented things like miniatures, making models, small busts and those kinds of things that I wanted to paint. So, um, and that, that all worked very well for me. Eventually I got a bigger one, a Photon Mono X, but that still, you know, while bigger was still not a, a very big build volume. Now I find that I have the need for bigger things and also more durable things, more robust materials than resin, because resin can be quite brittle. So um, I ordered a Creality, still love Creality as a brand, Ender 3 S1 Plus. The Plus is the larger build volume. So basically this printer can do about up to a cubic foot uh, build volume. And uh, I'm going to share, share with you today what I went through uh, putting that machine together, going up the learning curve on it, and doing my first prints. It's kind of like what it takes for a resin uh, ex experienced 3D printing person who's been using resin to move over to FDM. The first big difference between resin and FDM is that you have to actually assemble your printer. So when a resin printer arrives, it's in a much larger box, but it's all in one piece. You simply take it out and plug it in and get started. I watched several videos online about how to do this. Creality had one that was pretty complete, but very fast. And even after I slowed it down, I couldn't see everything they were doing. Some of the ones I found online uh, that were supposedly quick start videos actually skipped some critical steps around the cabling and where to plug things in. You have to attach the print head to the X gantry. Um, you have to take the frame and set it up and attach it to the base of the printer. Now I'm putting on the uh, control there on the right hand side that you're going to run it with. You put on the filament reel holder on the top. I actually have it on backwards there. But I turned off the camera when I got to the wiring because uh, you have to be careful. You have to plug things in correctly or you can ruin the connections. And so I really took my time with that. But eventually I have it all together and I'm running my first test print. This is when I realized that that filament really should be coming straight down into the feeder and I flipped that around later. The test print went well. It's this small little cat figure, and uh, I was really pleased with it. In retrospect, though, I'd like to point out that it's a small print, so it's a short run, and it's centered, so really leveling's not much of an issue. My second print was this articulating shark, and if you see the skirt, the, the, the circle around the shark, it's lifting in places, and that's an indication that I don't really have good leveling. But I was able to complete this, and I was pretty happy with that. Getting overconfident, I dove right into this project, which was a floating cup. Now the way these work is that you need to keep the cup in that pour-down light, so you have a very uh, sparse infill. The splash, however, which holds it up, is very dense, and that makes it a very long print. These are my first two attempts at the splash. And I wasn't quite as happy with these as I was with my first two projects. Under the build plate, there's these four red wheels. These are the front ones. And during those prints I just showed you, the wheels in the back actually fell off during the print. 
Of course, I went to the internet to find out what to do about this, and between the first and the second, I followed all the instructions about how to tighten them properly, and I still had them fall off on the second time. Further research taught me that it was a known issue that the standard springs were not good enough. They do not provide enough tension to keep the wheels from turning under the vibration of the machine, and you need to upgrade either to better springs or to these solid silicone mounts. So I bought the silicone spacers and installed them, and I started putting these stickers on the wheels so I could see how far the wheel had turned. And I reprinted the splash, and here I am at 71%. I never got this far before, and in fact, it finished. And I was able to print the cup with no problems, and here is the final product. I love this color-changing filament. Here it is from the other side. Convinced all my troubles were behind me, I moved on to doing a project I designed for the resin printer, this llama box. I'm going to print both pieces at the same time, and that means I'm going to be using up more of the build plate than I have up until this point. Let's stop and talk a second about leveling. There is a manual leveling procedure where you start in the middle and using a sheet of paper to test the gap between the nozzle and the bed, you move the bed up and down so it's a tight fit. And then you go to the, each of the four corners and you adjust using those red wheels to get a similarly tight fit. Now those of us who have paid $50 for the auto level upgrade go through this auto leveling procedure before we do a print. And it moves around and takes readings at 16 positions on the bed. Now those readings are supposed to be used during the print to compensate for any kind of irregularities in your build plate so that you always have good adhesion of the filament. But after repeated print failures, I learned that the Creality Slicer doesn't actually use these settings unless you add G-code manually to the printer machine settings for their own printer. The default settings actually zero those out. Here are the machine settings at this point in time. There are no checkboxes that allow you to say, I have an auto level on my machine. What tells it to look for those settings is this line of code here, which I had to find on the internet and go in and put in manually. Now let's talk about supports. Chai 2 box for my resin printer only had one support for this model, and it was at the bottom of the tail here. Creality didn't put any supports there. Here are the Creality supports, and I'm really concerned about the ones at the bottom. FDM supports are much blockier than what you see for resin printing, and I'm not sure how those are going to come out. I made sure I was available to look at this during printing, and I, I'm still really concerned. I just don't see how I'm going to be able to remove those, but maybe, I mean, maybe it'll work. But I also notice at this point that the walls of the box are way too thick. In fact, what's happening here is it's, I didn't, couldn't see it in the drawing, but it's put supports inside, all to hold up a tiny flange at the top of the box. In fact, to get the supports off the lid, I had to break the llama off and re-glue it in place. And those supports on the inside of the box, well, now I just have a double wall box, but I need a solution for this in the future. My takeaway for all this is that this has all been way harder than it needs to be. Creality really needs to step up. They need to upgrade the springs. They need to add the auto level code so that people that pay for it actually get the benefit of it. And they need to improve the software that adds the supports. Is it all worth it? Absolutely, yes. While I'm working on this video, my machine is in my workshop printing parts for one of my future projects. I'm still watching my stickers on the wheels, but they've been stable for a long time. I'm able to design things in Blender and print them on this machine. On the right here, you see some other components that I'm going to have in an upcoming video. And I, I just couldn't do those on a resin printer. I've gotten through that frustrating stage, and now I'm at the place where I'm really enjoying it. If you're curious about how I'm going to use those parts, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications. I have a lot of exciting projects coming up.